congratulate the president-elect to World Medical Association. Vice President Yemi Osibajo expresses fears on plans to reform gas projects for net zero target emission. Plus, Nigeria Governors Forum to intervene in five states, resolve issues on suspension resident doctors' track. Details in just a moment. Good evening. Welcome to the News at 7. I am Erika Ivi. Now on the news in details. President Mamadou Bouari congratulates Dr. Osahond Enabulele on his election as the president of the World Medical Association, WMA, for the 2022-23 executive year. According to the statement signed by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, the president recognizes that at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged the world. A Nigerian has been elected to lead a very important body whose members around the globe deserved commendation for their life savings roles and personal sacrifices to save humanity. President Buhari trusts that the past president of the Nigerian Medical Association, NME, and current president of Commonwealth Medical Association, CMA, will bring his wealth of experience in the medical field and impressive leadership skills to his new position. The president wishes Dr. Enabulele, a chief consultant's family physician, every success in the new assignment, assuring him of the federal government on flashing support. In its commitment to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, the federal government is already making effort to use large shares of clean energy sources. But limiting the development of gas projects poses their challenges. Vice President Yemi Osiba just says this is why the international community should understand that the plan to deform gas projects in the run-up to the global net zero emission target will be unhelpful to developing countries like Nigeria. As stated in a release by Laulu Akande, the Vice Sub President spokesperson said this was the crux of the presentations the Vice President made at different meetings in London. At the High Level United Nations event on the Energy Transition Plan in Africa with special focus on Nigeria. Vice President Osibajo observed that Africa as a continent is a home to the world's youngest, fastest growing population. And in order to create jobs and enable climate smart industrialization, the scale and quality of electricity services must increase significantly. As the Vice President explained, limiting the development of gas projects poses their challenges for African nations while making an insignificant dent in global emissions. Energy demand in Nigeria and across Africa, he says, is set to rise to deliver the industrialization, jobs, and economy-wide progress people deserved. On current energy consumption patterns globally, Vice President Osiba John noted that energy cons consumption in developing countries has doubled in the last 15 years and is expected to grow another 30 percent in the next 15 years and making capital available to fulfill the growing energy demand is central to reaching the goals of the Paris Agreement. The Vice President said Nigeria has already made a commitment to have 30 percent of its electricity supply from renewable by 2030, stressing that the natural gas is currently used for industry, fertilizer manufacturing, and cooking, which are more difficult to transition than power generation. And moving on, under the present global realities, which call for multilateral solutions to social and economic challenges, 
the strategic ideological ties between Nigeria and India are growing stronger. The enormous goodwill earned by the two countries has been felt at Nigeria's 61st anniversary in New Delhi. India and Nigeria all have been enjoying a warm, friendly, and deep-rooted bilateral relations are equally the largest trade partners to each other in Africa and Asia. Nigeria's ambassador to India, Ahmed Suli, explained to the audience at the gathering to celebrate with Nigeria on how the present government is making efforts to provide safe platforms for investment in various sectors to ensure successful industrial developments. Minister of State External Affairs and Education Rajand Kumar stood in for the government of India at the event assuring continued partnership for development of the two nations. Nigeria as a big segment of Africa has huge investment opportunities. As the country is shifting its focus from oil and gas sectors to such areas as tourism, entertainment, mining, agriculture, for infrastructure development, fintech, ICT, education, health, pharmaceuticals, among others. The Nigerian Governors Forum is intervening in five states of Abia, Imo, Ondu, Ikiti, and Kaduna to permanently resolve the grey areas arising from issues of the recently suspended resident doctor strike. The forum also pledged support for research in priority medical field at national and sub-national levels and strengthen commitment towards achieving control status of HIV in 2022 after presentation by Mark Gambrun. NGF also consented to the memorandum signed between Ministry of Trade and Investment, Nigerian Arabian Gulf Chamber of Commerce to attract direct foreign investment on the ongoing 2020 Dubai Expo. Correspondent Abubaka Osman Akwanda reports that uh, this is the 34th teleconference and 11 in series in the 2021 under the new normal occasion by the COVID-19. The world is uh, making another egg day. The 25th of the international celebration was started in 1996. Musa Babali reports that eat your egg today and every day is a theme of this year's celebration. The theme explains the importance of eggs in daily nutrition and encourages people to include eggs in their daily diet. Even though Nigeria remains the largest producer of eggs in Africa, the country, however, has the lowest consumption of eggs per capita. For instance, when countries like South Africa and Brazil have consumption of eggs of 230 to 300 per annum, the consumption in Nigeria is 60. We've uh, relatively had the, an increment uh, in terms of per person per uh, uh, capital consumption of egg from roughly 30, 40 eggs per person per year. In the last 15 years, increasing to around 60, 70 eggs per person per year. But when you compare it with the world average, we are still abysmally so low. The campaign is for average person, adults and children to take at least an egg per day or a crate per month. Each person is expected to budget 1,800 naira for egg from his monthly income. Some low-income earners saw this as a mission impossible. Because your salary is how much is your salary? You are thinking of your school fees and this. So, but if we have developed cold rooms, eh, now people can invest in storage. And that will help to encourage the farmers to get somebody to uptake. They will continue in production, and that will bring the cost down. However, the inclusion of egg in school feeding program of the federal government has increased the consumption of eggs in the country. This is based on the survey conducted by the Poultry Farmers Association of Nigeria. Eat an egg a day and every day 
is the advocacy. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. You're watching news reaching you from the studio of NTA Calabar. You can also watch this newscast from our YouTube channel at YouTube slash NTA Calabar. More news when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back to the rest of the bulletin. Akwaibom State Government has inaugurated a 14-man enforcement committee to monitor the implementation of the law to prohibit open railing and grazing of livestock and provide for the establishment of ranches, livestock administration, regulation and control. Susanna Sopo reports that the inauguration was performed by Secretary to the state government, Emmanuel Ekwan. The anti-open grazing bill, which was signed into law by Governor Dom Emmanuel recently, seeks to promote modern techniques of animal husbandry, create job opportunities, expand the value chain in livestock business, as well as promote international best practices in the production of meat and dairy products. The 14-man enforcement committee is to ensure that the tenet of the anti-open grazing law is implemented. Secretary to the state government, Emmanuel Ekuem, who performed the inauguration on behalf of the state governor, noted that the anti-open grazing law is not targeted at any individual or group, but it is necessitated by the rising need to ensure orderly organization of agricultural activities across the state and the country at large. Develop an integrated modern livestock development and production plan for the state. Uh, develop and maintain a sustainable livestock production industry in the state. C. Develop guidelines for the implementation of an integrated livestock production policy and make appropriate recommendations to the governor. Chairman of the committee, Dr. Glory Edith, says the committee will work in synergy with security agencies in the state to ensure that the interests of crop and animal farmers in the state are protected. This committee that you have inaugurated is for us to implement this law and we will thereby protect all parties concerned. To some people that are, are rearing animals, the animal is their major occupation. To some people that are crop farmers, the crops there that they are cultivating is as important as the animal to the animal uh, farmer. And thereby, we have to make sure that one is not causing problem to the other one. Other members of the committee include the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mr. Uko Udom, SAN, and some permanent secretaries. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. To ensure a safe monitoring environment during the Ember months, the Federal Road Safety Corps is asking motorists to comply with road safety tenet of the Corps. Sector Commander Cross River State Command. Ochija Ame said this at the flag of, of the 2021 Ember Mons Mega Rally in Calabar. Justin Item reports. It's another time of the year characterized with increased festivities and excitement though not without apprehension over the increase in road crashes associated with the ember month based on statistical data reducing road crashes in this month is the reason for this mega rally where the federal road safety corps says it intends to minimize road crashes by 15 percent and fatality by 20 percent the very essence of this strategy is to complement other effective mechanisms that have been employed in the year so as to stamp out avoidable road traffic crashes. Concerning the great role of human factor in road traffic crashes, the Corps has decided to partner with major stakeholders 
to carry out awareness and sensitization program. Cross River State's government commenced the Federal Road Safety Call for steps taken to improve commuting experience of residents. Drivers and other road users are in particular called upon to imbibe road safety measures as a lot depends on them. They must not overload their vehicles, neither should they drive beyond recommended speed limits. For motorists, road carnages are not only caused by human error, but bad roads. We also call on the federal and the state government to look at our roads. Our roads are bad. With the drivers and the car owners, we should take our precaution and know how we operate on the road. The 2021 Ember Month rally on the theme, Maintain Safe Speed, Avoid Night Travels and Enjoy Quality Road Experience, is part of the Federal Road Safety Core Strategies aimed at reducing road crashes in the Yuletide. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Federal Road Safety Corps, Ever SC, Benway State, has appealed to motorists to guide against the reckless driving and reduce speed to forestall dead and vehicular crashes on the roads. The Sector Commander Federal Road Safety Corps, Benway State Command, Yakubu Mohammed made the call during the flag cover of this year's Amberman safety campaign in Makodi. Correspondent Moses Ajau Ode was there and now reports. In Nigeria, the National Bureau of Statistics data reveals that between January 2013 and December 2019, over 10,000 persons were reported to have lost their lives to road accidents, making Nigeria one of the countries with the highest number of fatalities in Africa. To curtail the menace, the Federal Road Safety Corps began the Embermont campaign to sensitize road users and the general public on road traffic rules to reduce rates of accident in the last four months of every year. One of the FRC comprehensive strategic goals for year 2021 is to reduce RTC that is road traffic crash by 15% and fatality by 20%, which can only be realized through the collective efforts of all. Other stakeholders, while applauding the Federal Road Safety Corps, Benway State, for the initiative, assured of their continued support in reducing road accidents in the state. May I therefore charge the officers, men and special marshals of Road Safety Corps in Benway State to rise up and continue to deliver continuously in their duties and responsibility of surmounting the danger of road crashes and poor attitude of road users on our road. It is the sole responsibility of drivers to ensure that passengers are taken to their various destinations safely we want to thank our members for always listening to the advice given to us here. He who has here, let him hear. The inauguration marks the beginning of the 2021 Ember Month campaign in Benue State. Maintain road safety, avoid night travels, and enjoy quality roads. This is a theme of this year's. The attention of Zafara State Police Command has been drawn to a fake news trending on social media platforms that the police have purportedly arrested seven soldiers for their alleged involvement in acts of banditry. A statement signed by the command public relations officer Mohammed Shehu debunked the story, describing it as unfounded. The statement therefore enjoins members of the public to discountenance the fake news. It further warns against spreading fake and unsubstantiated information, stressing that any person or group found engaging in the unwholesome acts will be made to face the full wrath of the law. We draw the curtain tonight, but before we go, a recap of the top stories. President Mamadou Buhari has congratulated the President-elect World Medical Association 
expressing confidence on his capacity to lead the World Medical Association. Vice President Yemi Osibajo has expressed fears that the plan to defund the gas project to run up the global net zero emission will not help developing countries like Nigeria. It was also in the news that Nigeria Governors Forum has planned to intervene in five states to resolve gray areas arising from issues on the recent suspended resident doctor's strike. That's it. Remember to stay safe. Thanks for watching. Good night.